Hi, my name is Bob Jung. I manage internationalization at Google. We know language and culture differ across the globe. Adapting your app correctly is critical to providing a great user experience. But what does this actually mean for software? First, let me demonstrate how getting it wrong can be incredibly jarring. Suppose I gave this talk speaking like Yoda. Bob Jung, ITN Google director I am. ITN, what and how about I will talk? Did that sound strange? Maybe a bit hard to understand? Well, now let's look at a real example that Google launched. A long time ago in a galaxy far, far away, Gmail was still in beta. One of the setting UIs concatenated preferences to form a sentence reading, forward a copy of incoming mail to email address and keep Gmail's copy in the inbox. Seems reasonable, right? Then we translate it to Japanese. That translation has the correct meaning, but sounded like a Japanese Yoda. Something like, receive messages to the following address forward mail address and copies in inbox keep. Because word order can be very different for languages, a cardinal rule is to never concatenate phrases. Now, let's look at a few other things that will help you internationalize successfully. Many assume that internationalization is just about translating all the strings in the UI, but it's really much, much more. It impacts back-end as well as front-end software. It affects the whole software stack, including data storage and protocols, formatting dates, times, numbers, and currency, entering and displaying of text, sorting, displaying bidirectional and right-to-left text for languages like he Arabic and Hebrew, local calendaring systems, and of course, your UI design and much more. And ITN is not just implementing basic functionality correctly. You must design ITN from the beginning. If you don't plan ahead, things are bound to go wrong. Now, here's an example where Google failed to plan for ITN. Long ago, pre-YouTube, we had a product called Google Video. That product launched in the US and didn't worry about internationalization. This diagram shows the data paths for uploading, indexing, and serving user videos. The product team told us they use Unicode. So what possibly could go wrong? How about uploading a Beyonce video? You'll notice that she has an accented E in her name. That accented E broke every single data path for various reasons relating to non-ASCII data. Some problems are hard to find. Some even corrupted user data. It took several engineers many months to find and fix all of these bugs. All of them could have been avoided with correct design decisions and using existing programming techniques. Doing so would have had very little impact on their original development effort and schedule. So code to implement many of these IETN features are provided by libraries and APIs. Now, we don't recommend that you try to write these yourself. There's a lot of unobvious complexity. There's no reason for you to reinvent the wheel. The work has already been done for you. Hundreds of engineering staff years have gone into their development. Massive amount of data for these ABS have been collected and vetted. Two key examples are CLDR and ICU. CLDR contains tens of megabytes of language and regional data that drives the IT and APIs. Experts around the world continue to compile and vet this data. This graph of CLDR data shows the amazing growth of that data over the past 10 years. So it'd be very difficult to replicate this on your own. Tried, true, and trusted. ICU is a mature, widely adopted library with quite extensive features. It's embedded in Android, Chrome, and other companies' platforms. Because it underpins APIs on these platforms, you might be using ICU indirectly. And it's open source, so it's free to anyone to use. It's used by major companies and major products. And here are a few of those. Besides ICU and CLDR, there are just many more tools to help your ITN efforts. Now, besides APIs, your apps need platform support to display text in your users' languages. Google has developed the Noto font family, which covers hundreds of languages. Noto is embedded in Android and Chrome OS. It's also open source, so it can be used by any other platform or app. The platforms also provide input services that let you, your apps get input from your users in their own languages. There's keyboards for alphabetic language, Chinese, Japanese, Hindi, Korean, and more. Gesture for swiping, emoji, virtual cloud-based keyboards, and of course, handwriting and voice. Now, as I mentioned, ITN touches nearly all your software stack. Make sure you test it all. But I want to mention one very useful tool. 
before you spend your money and your valuable time transiting your app, how do you know it's going to work? Some of you may have had the experience of getting back a translation that was just a mess because of hard-coded strings, broken UI layouts, and problems with displaying non-ASCII characters. Pseudo-localization automatically creates fake translations. These allow you to test and debug without knowing another language. The strings are transformed to expose some of the problems I just mentioned, but they're still readable to you. Now, here, the string share what's new was made longer by adding 1, 2, 3 to the end. All the ASCII characters are converted to similar looking non-ASCII characters. Now you don't need to know German or some other language to test and debug your app. And the tools will automatically pseudo-localize all the strings in your UI to help you find those problems, the hard-coded strings and UI layout problems. Now if you look closely at this example, it found a real problem. In Google Plus, you could see that the icons were being clipped by that long text. On the right side, you've lost those, side of that, those icons. Now, once you've completed all this, designed for IETN, used the APIs, and tested your app, you're ready to translate. The process is pretty well known. You extract the resources, send them for translation, rebuild the localized apps, test and repeat. Now, Google provides a simple and streamlined process for Android and Chrome apps. This is covered in a related Google I.O. talk. Check out The World is Your Playground, Go Global with Google. To get your app ready for global users, make sure you visit these links to learn more. I hope this video will help you produce some great apps for the world.